So, it is my great pleasure to welcome Alexander Boshkovich here at the Institute of Slavic Studies. Um, I'm also a little sad that Professor Miranda Jakic couldn't make it today. Uh, due to an injury, she in fact had to stay in Berlin for a while longer, but has joined us at least per Zoom, so that's something already. Our guest is a professor and researcher at the uh, University of Columbia. Uh, he has obtained his PhD from the University of Michigan. Uh, before that, he studied comparative literature and literary theory at the University of Belgrade. His main research interests are Russian, East European, Yugoslav, post-Yugoslav, uh, foremost experimental and avant-garde artistic practices. Uh, regarded foremost through the lens of comparative media studies. Uh, he is the author of the book Pestici Huma u Vaska Pope. He is also a co-translator and editor of the book uh, The Fine Feats of the Five Cochrane's Gang, uh, which is also, I believe, the book you are going to talk, to, talk about to us today. So without further ado, please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for, for your introduction and thank you Miranda for your invitation and uh, I'm ex exceptionally honored to, to have this opportunity to present my work in front of this audience. Thank you all for coming, thank you Uroš for organizing everything and helping with logistics. And uh, yeah, today uh, I want to talk about a case study of my larger project that I work on and this is a project that focuses particularly on uh, photo poetry books uh, in the interwar period. Uh, these are the books of poetry that are illustrated with photographic materials, uh, whether photography or photomontage. And uh, this talk is, uh, as you already heard, aimed to actually uh, promote this edition that um, I together uh, done with, with uh, Ainsley Morse, who is a scholar, a translator, and a fellow co editor. Uh, this book has been published by the Brill Publishing House and it features our own introduction along with a poem in original Serbian language with English translation as well as a facsimile of the original book uh, from 1933. So before I continue let me just uh, give you the overall structure of my talk. It's going to be roughly at 30, 45 minutes and then we can continue with Q&A session. Um, and um, in some of the instances you will hear, you will see the black screen, it's not an error, it's intentionally so. Uh, so, first I want to uh, introduce you to the Belgrade Surrealism and uh, the main authors of this edition, Alexander Vucic and Dusan Matic, as well as their photo poetry artwork, the fine feats of the Five Cockroaches Gang. Uh, also, I'll say a few words about the political climate in 1930s Yugoslavia, and at the end of this section I, I will uh, lay out my uh, overall argument. Um, and then in the second part um, I will explain the surrealist interest in the renewal of children's literature and provide the overall, uh, uh, the, the general overview of the book. Uh, and I will focus particularly on uh, Matic's forward and Vucic's uh, narrative poem, as well as on its fabula, just to explain what's going on in the book. Um, also, I want to, in this part of the talk, to introduce the main surrealist concepts uh, that um, Yugoslav surrealists or Belgian surrealists uh, developed and put in their views. Uh, and uh, I will also offer a close inspection of one of the um, photo collages that is followed by the prose explanations and uh, try to say a few words about symbolic economies uh, of the Yugoslav society at the time that is connected uh, with the book, and uh, in this part, actually, I want to illustrate further my overarching argument. Uh, I will conclude at the end with uh, delineating this historical trajectory of Belgrade Surrealist Circle and their artistic creation. So, let's start. Um, so, unlike most other Surrealist gr groups throughout the Europe, uh, such as throughout Europe besides France, such as Romania and Czech, even Jap Japanese realism, which were active only from the late 20s, beginning of the 30s. Uh, Yugoslav surrealism was similar to Belgian surrealism. It means that it was coexisting with the early development of the surrealist movement in Paris, and uh, 
it lasted roughly from 1922 as a proto surrealism you can say because one of the main pro uh, opponent made uh, uh, founders of Belgrade surrealism was very a close friend with Breton and they had their correspondence Marco Ristic uh, and then um, it uh, lasted until 1933 uh, and uh, even as the even the production of the individual works uh, continued until 1939. Uh, representatives of Belgrade surrealism, such as Marko Ristic, Alexander Vucho, Dusan Matic, to, to name just a few, uh, from their very young age uh, had contacts with French uh, literature, uh, primarily uh, with the authors uh, from French uh, Dada and uh, sur later surrealism, um, primarily through their correspondence. Um, they also uh, would take the ideas directly from French magazines and books and prior to 1924, the year that when surrealism was established, they had personal contacts with uh, Breton, specifically Marco Ristic, who was at the time living in Switzerland, uh, was also a subscriber of Lita uh, the, the first magazine that uh, Breton was uh, publishing in before uh, uh, 1924. And in the late 1920s, French and Belgrade surrealists met personally and established contacts uh, as attested to uh, their correspondences, also by the large number of the uh, print matter that one can find in the personal archives, specifically in Belgrade, in, uh, um, in the library, on the archives of the Sun or the Serbian Academy of Science and uh, Arts. Um, so, among many editions which testify to Belgrade's realist interest in this aesthetic, political, and uh, philosophical potential of photography, which is what I'm interested in, uh, we can mention several editions. First is um, uh, the journal Sedo uh, Chance or Testimonies, in which you can find photographs like these. Um, it looks like these are tattooed people, uh, but the, uh, the right photography is actually a trick photography because this is, these are not the original tattoos, this is the suit that was dressed by the woman that it looks like uh, her body was tattooed. Um, then uh, there is this famous edition, one of the first surrealist uh, poetry uh, books that is illustrated with a uh, copy of Linograph, uh, also with a photomontage and a photography. Um, then there is this edition from 1930, uh, which is a beautiful bilingual Anarch uh, the Impossible, published in the 1930s, and it represents this universal model of avant-garde multimedia work that moved this set boundaries not only of ballet but also of fine arts. Um, there are several uh, photo illustrated works, such as this Dushan Matic's photo poem called Murky Fishing in Clean Waters, that was published separately in this magazine as a poem. And then uh, Alexander Vucho and Matic's paper movie, uh, that is actually a screenplay that was never meant to be screened, but um, it is an in in intermedial work, an uh, example of this cinema by other means. Uh, there are also many of the collages that Marko Ristic did um, that are saved in his archives in Belgrade, etc. Uh, another exquisite example is this book that I'm going to talk about today that was published in 1933. It is called The Fine Feats of the Fire Cockroach Gang and this book actually marks the symbolic end of the historical avant-garde in Yugoslavia. Uh, although it was published as a separate edition, uh, in September 1933, after the collective surrealist movement in Belgrade had ended, this book is still, still deeply connected to the entire movement and represents one of its specific expressions. Uh, it is published, uh, as you can see here, as a surrealist edition. Uh, it is a collaborative creation by two prominent Belgrade surrealists, Alexander Vucho, who wrote Verses, and Dusan Matic, who authored the foreword, unconventional collages and the prose interludes which function as explanation uh, of the collages. Um, collaboration between Vucho and Matic dates uh, back to the mid-1920s when they experimented with the fusion of different genres and produced several intermediate uh, works. As this, uh, you can see three of them here, they're all kept in National Museum or Contemporary, National, Contemporary Museum of Modern Art um, or Museum of Contemporary Art in Belgrade. And especially interesting is the, the middle one, which is actually a collage that features a text together with, uh, you know, with um, uh, illustrations. Uh, the further uh, left, uh, you see the um, 
Franz uh, Marble, which is an assemblage from the 30s. Um, to Dusha Matic and Alexander Lucho uh, are very important because both of them belong to the Serbian intellectuals who were educated in France after the First World War. Dusha Matic especially holds an important place in the spread of surrealist ideas uh, within the Serbian context. Namely, he was educated in Grenoble, Nice and Paris uh, before he took a position to be a professor of philosophy in a high school. And during his professorship in a high school, he actually infatuated young uh, students to become members of the Surrealist movement. Um, so later on, uh, some of his students uh, become members. These are George Kostic, George Jovanovic, and Oscar Davicho. They were all very young members of the Surrealist group in the 1930s. Uh, similarly, Alexander Vucu was educated in Nice and Paris prior to his return to Yugoslavia in 1921. And uh, in Yugoslavia, he started to participate in the cultural life of the capital, together with Marko Ristic, a central figure of the movement. Both of them were the founders of the uh, Belgrade group of surrealists, as well as the main editors and contributors to these magazines, such as Impossible, that I showed you, and another one called The Surrealism Here and Now, that was published between 1931 and 1932. Um, let me say a few words about the historical political context. Namely, 1930s are interesting in Yugoslavia because they not only mark a mature period of a collective surrealist uh, uh, group activities, but they also uh, mark a historical, historic, uh, interesting historical changes uh, in, the, in Yugoslavia in the 1930s. And mainly after Breton published his second uh, Manifesto of Surrealism, uh, this was the period under the sign of the revolution, and subsequently Belgrade surrealists attempted to enlist themselves in its service. In the late 1920s, the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenia uh, were going through a significant political crisis. So in January 1929, in response to this political crisis triggered by the murder, murder of Stjepan Radic, a member of the parliament and Croatian uh, representative, uh, King Alexander Karadjordjevic abolished the constitution, prorogued the parliament and instituted the personal dictatorship, so-called January 6th dictatorship. He also changed the name of the country from Kingdom of Serbs, Croats uh, and Slovenes into Kingdom of Yugoslavia and also altered these uh, internal divisions of the country's governance. So here you can see actually that he divided the country in a way that these ethnic, uh, uh, ethnic kind of uh, communities cannot group themselves as, the, as we know the Yugoslavia look today. Um, in 1931, King Alexander decreed a new constitution that actually transferred the executive power to King and that which allowed him to directly appoint the upper house and uh, this was also a consequence of the dictatorship. Parliamentary monarchy ceased to exist and he introduced the constitutional and hereditary monarchy and um, uh, his moves were reflected in the leftist actions of the artists such as Ivan Antovjanovic, a Croatian artist who was a member of the Communist Party, who did this uh, poster for the actual cover of the book that was a leaflet, communist leaflet in Berlin. Uh, this was done for the exhibition in Berlin in the 1931, but she is obviously illustrating these dire conditions that Alexander Karadjordjevic dictatorship brought uh, with these constitutional changes. In the same year, in January 1931, very early, January 10th, uh, this Belgrade Surrealist group published this leaflet, The Position of Surrealism, signed by 11 members of the group, uh, in which they advocated for a collaborative rebellion against any mode of oppression and called openly for the socialist revolution, explicitly accepting Marx's victim of changing versus interpreting the world. This rigorous censorship of King's dictatorship banned the leaflet immediately after it was published and the direct persecution of the Belgrade surrealists inevitably pulled them to the greater extremes in, the, in their political positions and eventually the entire movement came to an end. On the one hand, the group itself divided into two fractions, two factions, especially after the Aragon affair, um, and also partly due to the political problems that uh, their country faced and the attitude towards revolutionary engagement that they had. 
On the other hand, the regime, uh, the king's regime of his dictatorship, uh, decimated the group and uh, put a halt to their activities. So, interestingly enough, Vucci and Matic both gravitated towards these two different factions within the surrealist group. Uh, Matic essentially was um, a leader of the faction that advocated for more active participation in the revolutionary activities. He was guided by the ideas of Marxist communism and um, unsurprisingly uh, this group and this faction was comprised of all his former students. Uh, this faction believed that if surrealism want to overcome this contemplative attitude and transform the dream into reality, it must turn to the proletariat as the agent of the social revolution. Vucho, however, belonged to this opposing faction that was gathered around Bakuristic, Milan Dedinac, and Stelan Jiradinovic. Uh, rather than affirming communism in practice, this faction that Vucho belonged to attempted to neutralize the autonomy of the artistic field by situating itself in opposition to both bourgeois art and the modern avant art, which is interesting, while simultaneously proposing much more engaged socialist literature. And this is the trend that will uh, develop later on with Miroslav Krilaja in the, in the late 30s and onward. So their different programs are both articulated in this book that I'm going to talk today. So both Vucic's and Matic's programs can be seen in this book. Um, attempts to compromise between the, these, two, these two surrealist factions came too late since the group, group's active activity was abruptly cut, cut short by the outside forces. And this is something that we can read in the foreign uh, print uh, namely in the magazine The Surrealism in the Service of Revolution, French surrealist uh, René Crevel wrote an article, Yugoslav Surrealist Under the Ban, in which he uh, writes in detail about the arrest of several Belgrade surrealists and their detention without a trail by the pro-fascist Yugoslav regime, as he called it. Um, and linking this arrest to the contemporaneous rise of Nazism in Europe. So he writes about Oscar Delic, who was arrested in the Bosnian town Bihać, where he had organized the Center for Marxist Research. Uh, he was tortured and sentenced for five years in prison. He writes also that George Kostic was held after several months in detention without a trail, that he was later set free. He said that George Jovanovic and Korcho Popovic had been arrested and were still waiting in jail for the trial at the time when Pravel was writing his article. Uh, Korcha Popovic was essential uh, uh, later released when George Giovanni spent three years in prison. This is something that happened after this uh, article was published. Uh, also, both Matic, Bucho, and Dedinac were also arrested and later released, although Cavell did not mention them in his articles. So all the members from this uh, group around Matic, Dusan Matic, ended up in prison or in immediate danger, and finally the Galway Service Circle uh, dissipated, stopped to exist. So having these historical facts in mind, the case of this book, Final Feeds, Five Cocktails Candy, uh, appears even more appealing. Namely, on the cover of this book, uh, under the Alexander Vucho's name, one can find an enigmatic pseudonym, Askelet, Askelet. And uh, this is the pseudonym that Alexander Vucho signed several of these poems published in, in between 1931 and 1933 in the Daily Politica, which had this supplement for the kids once a week. And he published uh, several poems, including the Five Feeds of Five for Cocker Games yeah, uh, there. He signed them with this Askerland. Askerland is interesting because it, it, it is also um, some sort of anagram pseudonym of Alexander, but it also has connection in Turkish language because Asker in Turkish means soldier. So it is like a land of soldier when the you know secret police blacklist exists, if you want. Because he was warned by this politica's main editor, Vladislav Rimnika, that his name was on a secret police list. So he should be careful how he signs his uh, works. Um, so what was the reason that the Vucho's poem uh, passed the censorship? Most likely the officer, or official censorship did not consider children's literature to be as dangerous as other serious publications that launch an open call 
for the social resistance. However, what I want to argue is the opposite, that this book actually proves that it is highly politically loaded project. And in what follows, I argue that the book Find Feats is a double voice surrealist dispositif or a suggestion apparatus that is set in motion by the reader viewer who has an important part of this conceptual material circuit participates in an attempt to interrogate the very conditions of the political under modernity and to enact the symbolic destruction of polit politics. And I will explain later these terms, what I mean under political and under politics. So I argue that this intervention is made possible through the surrealist collage, which disarticulates elements of social reality to establish unforeseen configurations between these elements. It intervenes in the representation of the world in order to re-articulate elements of the reality and also of social relations. So let me talk about the surrealism for children. Um, it's interesting to note that Vucos and Matic's book introduced a new revolutionary form of the book and uh, represent an example of how children's literature should look. Uh, the plot of this uh, uh, book is very simple. Uh, it follows the uh, filmic narration of the events, mainly unfolding around the convent or institute. Uh, Wuchos novel in verse opens with the first episode in the same manner as uh, Lewis Carroll's The Hunting of the Snark, which describes the main character. So each of, the, of these five boys has some interesting uh, virtue or physical ability that he is known of and that will later on in the narrative proves as very, uh, proved itself as very important. And um, they, their names will be translated as Crocker, Nori, Johnny, Bulgy and Captain Joe. And we'll learn that there is a little Mira who is um, a kept in the State Institute and the main villain sister, sister Calavestra. Uh, the boys are described as autonomous, as uh, uh, boys who don't have any parental super, uh, supervision and se several of them are clearly marked as uh, working class or very poor. Uh, second uh, second uh, episode um, tells the story that they soon discovered that Mira has been kept uh, in this institute and in state convent without her will and they collectively decide to rescue her from the nuns who are holding her there captive. Um, and although their first attempt was well conceived, it falls because one of the boys was too hungry. Uh, his hunger is both a humorous characteristic, because he is called Big Gold Nori, and he, it is also a condition that pinpoint, uh, pinpoints to many other children uh, who are sharing this uh, characteristic, mainly living in poverty. Um, at first disappointed by their failure, they, they soon come up with a new idea to say Mira with the help of a hot air balloon. Uh, and they persuade the downtrodden old man Lampshade to make them a balloon and with its help they ultimately succeed in rescuing Mira. And after determin determining there is no safe place to hide her in the city, the children together with Mira escape to the river island, uh, Ada, which is on the city's outskirts. And uh, that's where they continue to hide from the society, from their own families, uh, nuns, and other official types. And this uh, island becomes actually their uh, temporary, not only their temp temporary refuge, but also married space for enjoying their freedom. And the poem ends with an epilogue that was written only for the book. It doesn't exist in the Politica daily. And in this epilogue, Alexander Bucho uh, clearly articulates political position and emphasizes the social message underlying the book. And I will read you the, the last verses. He says, Most of the world these days hearts to the croak of cash, where fields once bore fruit, now bars those smelling of ash. For most of the world now, the only ones with rights are spondros and parasites, while the rest of the human kind is neglected. So with this sober and critical tone, the epilogue departs from the very pell-mell exciting action of the rest of the poem, bringing it more in line with this explicit criticism of bourgeois society laid out in Matic's foreword. And uh, in contrast to Vucho's verses, the illustrations uh, and accompanying text by Dusha Matic, uh, including his foreword, are very complex, 
are more abstract and even more dark to the point that sometimes being frightening. Uh, they indicate much less of an obvious orientation toward children. And in the foreword, for example, Matic speaks about the other and different children who were, who were traditionally the object of, of pity in children's literature, rather than its protagonists and implicit readers. In the cinematic manner of montage of attractions, his foreword actually uh, uh, gives uh, or touches upon many subjects from the fairy tale to contemporary society, to even contemporary murder that happened in Zagreb a month before they were published in this book. So for folk saying, sutra by a teacher, to the dreams told by children, etc., connecting them to the unexpected junctions between aesthetics and the ideology. For example, Matic openly directs his critique against the interest of bourgeois well-tension uh, uh, or wealth uh, regarding a fundamental and critical social problem which is children's education and upbringing, how children are raised by their parents and their society. He writes, this group, uh, these grown-ups puffed up like enormous bagpipes, long and thin like pokers wearing pants, have evidently packed away their memories like useless old toys in the attic. They forget their chicken brains by the bathroom sink where they wash up in the morning. Now they're walking to the house and sitting in offices and talking about how they work for the sake of their children's happiness. Matic asserts that the bourgeois system of child rearing is based on the bourgeois investing into their children the capital of their own prejudices, norms, and prohibitions. Emphasizing the social differences between children readers and the conditions of their respective education, he concludes, on one side are the children of poverty, on the other side, children of the rich. The first are debased by poverty, the others are disfigured by wealth. Children, like the majority of grown-ups, are the victims of this, this society. But, he writes further, the true childhood, which they want to suppress, squeezes up through the threatening stones, the heavy slaps, cruel words, schoolhouse lies, curses, poverty, and wealth. Belgrade Surrealists namely believe that uh, the true childhood is representative of true desire that penetrates the bourgeois stuffiness and serious rationality of adults. Such a breakthrough to the clutches and grids of uh, physical discipline is given shape in dreams, humor, and poetry. Matic encapsulates the significance of a true meaning of poetry for children. Namely, for him, the principle of poetry and principle of child, childhood are one and the same. That is the principle of desire. That is in antagonism with the repressive mechanism of contemporary society. It questions all education, even all morality. Vucho similarly identifies children as the main actors of his poems with the real surrealism. In one of the interviews that he gave in the 1960s, he asserted that the children are actually true surrealists who observe the world through the eyes of a dreamer, who want to escape the everyday reality and to think about the non-existent, who are irreconcilable with stagnation, who refuse to accept borders between the real and the imaginary, between the possible and impossible, and whose spirit is guided by freedom. At the end, Vucho states that children love to jump over the barriers and to demolish them, both literally and figuratively. The poem that Vucho writes uh, has a series of elements that are surrealistic. One of the most, most well-known uh, is this um, description of a dream that I will not read, uh, but you, you, you have the translation there. And he is also, besides this port portrayal of the uh, eerie dreams, or eerie atmosphere of dreams, he writes also about the spleen, about the palpable fear, which was also something new in the children's literature in the Yugoslav context at the time. Um, and uh, besides these surrealist elements, the uh, poem itself has a lot of uh, uh, a lot of allusions to the everyday culture of Belgrade and everyday life. Uh, it unfolds in a real Belgrade uh, milieu, and the tale is brimming to references to the popular cultures, uh, the items that are reported in newspapers. One of the example is. Um, uh, this uh, Picard, who was uh, at the time very well known because he was uh, flying in a hot air balloon from the Europe to the uh, United States. Uh, and the uh, poem references him, but also the uh, poem has a lot of um, 
references to the popular cafe bars and restaurants in Belgrade, such as, for example, Six, Six Poplars uh, and so forth. Um, Besides, uh, a photomontage is featured of, of course, real elements, um, uh, concrete realism, photographic image plays its role alongside uh, uh, realistic references in Muchos poems. Uh, so, I'll stop about the first part there and talk a little bit about surrealist concepts as a point of orientation that both structure this narrative and also permeate uh, 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 surrealist meanings that I want to discuss. Um, so the concept of barriers that I mentioned in relation to Butcher's 1960s interview about the kids uh, that is imposed through the uh, education and promotion of class value is mostly, uh, most clearly represented in Surrealist concept of the wall, uh, which was articulated and conceived through the medium of photography. Namely, there is this famous photography by Nikola Vucho, the youngest Alexander Vucho's brother, uh, who made this photography during his stay in Paris a year before it was published in the Almanac Nemo, which or the Impossible, depicting these aligned bricks on the bank of Sienne. This photograph is divorced from time and place, and yet it precisely pinpoints to this anxiety of the epoch. By focusing on the seemingly hidden detail of familiar mass-produced objects such as a building block, Vucho extends the boundaries of the artistic and architectural fields of action. However, when this title is read and cross-referenced in the text appearing on the same page in the journal, this photograph acquires additional meaning. Namely, we find out that this is the wall, the symbol of the wall of agnosticism, irony, and indifference that bourgeois society so persistently constructs in defiance to the essential fire and real consciousness. Consequently, this wall of agnosticism is not just a set of more or less anonymous building blocks, but it is a visual metaphor of agnosticism and indifference that refers to the opaque wall raised between the spectator and the world, but also between the surrealism and the bourgeois milieu. Matic's photo, photo collage or photomontage on the front cover of the fine feeds not only reiterates this sequencing pattern of Nikola Vucho's photograph, but it also functions as both a visual synagogue of the Convent Institute and a visual metaphor of the meanings accumulated around this double named institution. All the attributes of the wall, stiffness, rigidity, flexibility, invincibility, simultaneously match up to the primary character feature uh, that is featured uh, as the main poem's antagonist, the sister Calavestra, who embodies rigidity, strictness, and discipline. Uh, Sister Calavestra's stern educational measures create an atmosphere diametrically op uh, opposite to the free life outside an institute, uh, which is exemplified in these feisty, companionable, and playful cockroaches. Matic's front cover photomontage is significant for at least three reasons. First, it functions as a so-called so initial formula in the fairy tales, and I will explain what does it mean. Second, through its repetition, spacing, and doubling, it creates a visual rhyme and simultaneously implies the reference to the double name of the institution and the dual role of the textual and visual media in the book. And third, this doubling spacing provides a meta-commentary on the concept of the internal, and I will explain all these three along the way. I'll talk about marvels. So, while the initial formula in the fairy tales, such as, you know, in a certain kingdom, once upon a time, beyond tries three realms, etc., when this initial formula transports reader to a magical world that is detached from our uh, involved space and time, Matic's photo collage introduces the visual chronotope of real space in real time. The initial formula uh, of fairy tales carries the readers into the archaic, primordial, mythical time that is beyond reach, while Matic's photomontage represents modern and linear time to this successive sequence of snapshots of the immutable wall and the girl in different poses, thus suggesting both the movement from captivity to liberation in a scene sequence that resembles a storyboard. 
At the same time, this simultaneous representation of, simu of successive sequences suggests that the reality into which Matic's photomontage transposes us as the readers retains its magic properties. The Surrealists were particularly fond of photomontage for its capacity to reveal the marvelous as property of the, of the real, making it an ideal new revolutionary means of representation. In the foreword, Matic actually gives his theory of photocollage. He writes, Caesars draw, books without pictures are boring, says Alice in Wonderland. Books with pictures can at least be looked at. In Russia, at the, time, at the time, all the children's books have pictures. When you have looked at the pictures a hundred times and get tired of them, let the scissors out to graze on them. Scissors are quicker than the kangaroo. Snip off that fellow's moustache and paste it on the stove. Cut off the little girl's slacks and glue them to a door. Why should doors always be open or closed? Let them take a walk. This is how you get a cut and paste picture, a picture opportunity, a picture feeling. This is how you take immobile picture tones and turn them into a living picture, a live picture. This is how you bring together pictures parted forever and how you get the pictures you want, desired pictures. The experience of reality as representation is at the heart of both photographic medium and surrealist thinking. It enables Matic to recognize the marvelous, not only in the stories, but also in the real life. Commenting on this difference between the folk tales and the contemporary fiction, he writes in his foreword the following. A child senses that the enchanted land that grannies and aunties told him about, as if it was somewhere far, far away, is here, quite nearby, somewhere right next to him. He senses that wonderful things didn't only happen to fairy tale princesses or magic wings, they also happened to the children and grow up, grown ups all around him. And I want to talk about spacing in Dublin. Namely, in the cover image, Matic employs uh, spacing in Dublin, creating visual rhymes through repetitive patterns. For example, the image of five cockerels rhymes with the five images of Mira uh, in different body positions, which also is a reference to the five episodes plus epilogue of the poem. The wall on the cover is also divided into these repetitive gray fragments by doubling the sequencing that resembles the you know, monotonous pattern of these hollow building blocks we saw on Nicola Lucio's photo photograph. Last, lastly, these repetitive white spacing lines on the wall arrive with the pattern of uh, uh, black grids on the window. Beyond the visual register, the strategy of spacing and doubling appears in the double name of the convent and the state institute for the girls, which is actually a, a sign that signifies the monolithic construction and monarchical constitution of the existing Yugoslav autocratic government, right? You have the kingdom, which is always autocratic, I mean, autocratic kingdom that is a regime, political regime connected to the church, right, of the king. Um, Furthermore, the convent or the state institute functions as this uh, all-embracing sign of the monumentalizing forces that tend to canonize the social and everyday life practices. As the concepts really, really con complex sign, the state institute for girls and convents becomes what is in, in the structuralist theory known as actant, right? When Algidas uh, Julien Grimas read Vladimir Prop, he extended the notion of character that it can be non-human, meaning that um, the accent as a term function as this uh, extension of the uh, traditional ontological concept of literary character. And it's later on, as we know, used in the Bruno Latour's uh, actor network theory. Uh, and the last concept I want to talk about is the interval. Uh, the concept of interval is, I would argue, meta-commentary uh, or this image of the cover introduced a meta commentary in the interval. Namely, uh, it is uh, embodied in the image of the window that you see here in the wall. Formally speaking, the window is a frame gap, uh, a hole, a fissure in the wall that enables the visual access to representation of space both outside and inside the wall. But this frame gap does not belong to either of these two spaces. Rather, the window indicates the space in between these two. Uh, as a gap between these two spaces, the window allows also for simultaneous access into two different temporalities 
that are arrested by and with their spatial representations. And again, this frame gap does not belong to either of these two temporalities. Rather, we should think about the window as a sign for the location of the present moment between its relation to the past and the, its anticipation of the future. This window does become a visual representation of the interval. It has a double uh, spatio-temporal meaning. It refers to the space and time in between space and time. And it also indicates a spatio-temporal difference that marks departure and anticipates arrival that is both temporal and spatial, but never certain presence. It functions actually, the window functions as a self-reflexive sign for the difference assigned to the space and, and the moment hovering between Mira's imprisonment and her salvations. Needless to, uh, needless to say, the reader viewer is put precisely in the position of Mira. Mira not suggests uh, with this photomontage uh, that uh, the cover itself aims, aims to interpolate the reader into a certain set of leftist assumptions causing uh, us to awaken from and rebel against uh, tacitly accepted approaches to the world installed by the bourgeois education. Here is actually uh, how uh, montage, uh, Matic's frontal montages function within the narrative. Namely, we have these episodes that I talked about, and each of the photo montages and its explanation is put in the uh, meantime, right, in this gap. It follows um, this ver both verbal and visually, these photomontages follow what happened in the meantime in between the events introduced by Uccio's verses. And this is very important because the photo collages are addressing, explaining, and showing the events that are set in this narrative spatial temporal gap or interval. Moreover, if you look at the book, material book, you see the pages number eight and nine, and this photo collage with uh, explanation is literally inserted between the pages 8 and 9. So just like a, a material uh, uh, proof of the same concept. So I want to talk a little bit about symbolic destruction of politics towards the end. Uh, for that purpose, purpose uh, I will just walk you through the uh, one of the, this is the second photo montage. Um, uh, which is interestingly enough filled this special temporal gap provided by Vucius verses. Namely, we learn that uh, the cockerels found out about Mira that she's imprisoned and they want to uh, uh, save her. Uh, the last sentence of this prose explanation says that, uh, that uh, one of the guy, uh, Crocker, one of the cockerels, Crocker, uh, winks at Mira and uh, letting her know that her saviors have, have arrived. Uh, and he's uh, on the very left uh, represented there. Um, so this photo collage presents the Convent Institute as one of the main villains or actors of the poem. This is the cellar uh, that represents the literal darkness of the repression practiced by this double name institution, uh, signifying that way this Karajorje, which is a autocratic dictatorship to the link between the church and the state. <coughs> Both the photo collage and the company text share the formulaic structure in which the experience of imprisonment is created and made palpable by the horrific repetition of the same, either the same image, image of the nun, right, there is a swarm of nuns compared in the text to the painted ladybugs, or more literal translation would be whitewashed cockroaches. Mm -hmm. And it's also uh, uh, suggested by the repetition of the same formulaic symptom. Each paragraph starts with, then Sister Ananya said, then Sister Begonia uh, squealed, then Sister uh, Charuguma uh, came, and so forth. Um, uh, then uh, Mira whispered, and then Sister Charuguma uh, pinched, and so forth. Um, so this repetition is very important. The scene that is described in the Sermatici's explanation is uh, filled with symbolic and actual violence. Namely, the nuns treat Mira uh, in a way that is very similar to the interrogation processes practiced by Spanish Inquisition or the fascist purges. It can also be read easily as a commentary on the interrogation of several Belgrade series during Karajorgi's dictatorship that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this interrogation also heavily employs Christian symbols such as soul, vinegar, Lord's Prayer, crosses, fish, and so forth. 
The nuns violently insist on this ideological power that these religious symbols perform in the exercise of the dogmatic belief and its repressive control. Further, Maltish caption even conveys a sense of speech which visuals are unable to communicate. The nuns are fiercely passionate in their loquacity. He uses Matic's use of picturesque language, conveys the force of their dogmatic zeal. His prose explanation features a still more striking example of the brutal oppression that is visible here in the mentioning of the castor oil, uh, which uh, Sister Calnesser calls the real mean for the purification of the soul. And uh, this is interesting because the force feeding resistors with castor oil were, were, was common means of punishment practiced by black shirts in fascist Italy under Benito Mussolini's regime. And there is this even uh, uh, a caricature that Mikowski made in 1923 uh, of Mussolini uh, with the castor oil. Um, Namely, Matic thus compares barefoot Mira with those political dissidents who were, who were forced fed large quantities of castor oil by fascist squads, thus implicitly associating practices of Yugoslav secret police with those of Mussolini's black shirts. By intervening in Vucha's representation of children's world, Matic makes a clear statement about the oppressive political conditions in the kingdom of Yugoslavia, as Ivan Tomienov did in this photograph. In addition to that, uh, Matic's text introduced in this central part some sort of parodic pastiche of the holy prayer, uh, Our Father, uh, which in the original goes like, Oce nasci tamburasci, dai na vienu mleka chasci, which is obvious blasphemy or, or irreverence towards religious uh, uh, prayer, which is, um, I would argue, something that we saw recently with the Pussy Riot in, in Russia, right? They exercise the same sort of uh, punk blasphemy towards the uh, place where they perform the um, song. So <clears throat> I argue that Vucha and Matus Surya's dispositive establishes an attempt to inter interrogate the very conditions of the political under modernity and to enact the symbolic destruction of Yugoslav politics through disrupting its representation. So here I have in mind politics and political concepts uh, introduced by Paul IV. Uh, according to him, politics describes particular institutional forms of political organizations, such as political parties, legal institutions, etc. Whereas the political describes the original founding moment that con constitutes the social space of certain society. So the value of the creative endeavor for the surrealist was, was to articulate the moment of a political possibility through the production of disruptive images, strategies that are already developed by the surrealist image and the surrealist collage. The surrealist image, as well as the collage, is not dependent on established canons of meaning. Rather, they open an interval between the sense and meaning, allowing it to manifest the experience of freedom. The image of collage functions as a matrix that disarticulates elements of social reality to establish the unforeseen configuration between them, and the role of it is to intervene in the representation of the world in order to rearticulate elements of the social relations. Um, and Matic's photo collage uh, actually established a narrative program that works against the narrative closure and closure of the political possibility in a twofold manner. First, these photo collages create a gap in the place and in the moment where this gap appears as non existent. Second, as photo collages that are made by the procedure of montage, they point to the subtle forces in both political and narrative power by performing a radical intervention, a cut, into the tissue of the organic model of growth and its classic, largely bourgeois, assumptions of harmony, unity, and closure. In his foreword, Matic reflects on the role that photo collage uh, has to intervene into representation of the world and to perform the proper destruction of politics. And he writes, in order to make a better order for people and for children, an order that would not be a tree-lined alley, a model, a bench, that would not be a torture, what needs to happen is to scatter the existing pictures, alleys, models, benches, etc. in every direction, 
and that these picture cells, models, benches, etc., humanely explode. Butcher's poem, interestingly, ends with a final photo collage accompanied by a short sentence that shifts our attention from the interval into the future and explain what happens next. He, uh, the text says, and that's how the boys set off for their new feats and the new life. As one can see, the wall or the institute or the convent, its walls, and by extension the politics and the institutions, is smashed to smittenness. The brave new kids occupying the ruins, they play amid the remnants of the what was. The factory chimneys in the background are in fact taken from Charles Schiller's photographs of the fourth plant in Detroit, and they stand as an important emblem of modernity and foreshadow subsequent socialist industrialization that will happen after the Second World War. High in the sky, here you can see the five-pointed star, which is an open allusion to the Soviet communism, which was, which was quite a risky move and gesture in 1933 since the Communist Party of Yugoslavia was banned in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. As you all know, the communists came out of the Second World War in Yugoslavia as the victors, and many surrealist joint partisans who were fighting German Sussex, which were ultra-nationalist Nazi puppet state of Croatia and Chetniks, which was the official army of the young King Peter in exile. For example, Kocha Popovic, that I mentioned, who was detained in 1933, became Tito's right hand during the Second World War. After the war, Kocha Popovic, who was one of the surrealists, became Yugoslav and uh, became a secretary of the state for foreign uh, affairs, and he served as a representative of Yugoslav delegation to the United Nations General Assembly. Um, Marco Ristic served as an ambassador in Paris, and later on he served as a, a president of the Yugoslav National Committee for um, uh, UNESCO. Um, Alexander Vucos worked as a director of the film companies and was also director of Zvezda Film and Davala Film, which were these two, uh, we could say, the biggest mm -hmm. production film uh, houses in former Yugoslavia that um, produced the Black Wave cinema, among others, but also official Red Wave partisan films. Uh, Dusan Mandic worked as a professor and a dean at the uh, theater, uh, film, and radio television academy that later became an academy for. Uh, for uh, film and television. Um, and uh, you can see two of them in this uh, literary, highly masculine matinee in 1974. Uh, for left to right, you have Branko Čopić, Stelan Rajčković, uh, Vasco Popa, and then in the middle there are Vucho and Matić, and then Zinjanski, Selimović, Andrić, and the literary critic Petar Džadžić. Uh, so, in a way, they occupy the central position. Uh, on the stage. Um, interestingly enough, uh, after 1945, the fine feats of Cockrell's gang was republished several times. Only the second edition from the 1959 included Matic's collages, but it was printed in a reduced format and with a pure quality. All subsequent editions <coughs> removed both the forward and the photo collages with explanations. Uh, why, while well, historical circumstances have changed, the winners no longer needed to question the politics, let alone to perform its symbolic destruction. They needed to defend it along with the entire Yugoslav socialist state apparatus. And the next wave of the subversive uh, voices belonged to the generation of, who grew up reading these uh, surrealist children books and who would also educated by the uh, Matic and uh, Vucho, and who would express themselves largely through a different medium, through the uh, medium of the film, uh, and that would be the black wave uh, generation of filmmakers. And this is a WR, and this is Pornis, and a French poster for uh, Macabeus film. And let me just conclude that the book, the, the, the Five Feats, is a double uh, voice or double coded surrealist dispositive. These different programs of Vucha's verses and Matic's collages enable its alternating current. The dispositive is programmed to be a dynamic conceptual design, a suggestion apparatus set in motion by the reader viewer, who, as an important part of the conceptual material circuit, operates as a producer by conducting perpetual transfer from one medium to another. In this process, the reader-viewer, whom I call prosumer, right from producer and prosumer, 
participates in the interrogation of the very conditions of the political, the articulation of the moment of political possibility, and the enactment of symbolic destruction of politics. The ultimate goal of surrealist dispositive, as this book is, is not to change the world out there, as some would call it, as much to change our conception of and relation to it, so that we experience reality constituted as a sign or presence, trans presence transforming into absence, into representation. In other words, we are prompted to experience the world out there no longer as a technologically unmediated state of existence, but as a signified reality and an actual habitat of the marvels. Thank you.